Palumbo here for Muscle Serpents Daily, guys, and we are in the snake room. I was here a little earlier and I found a clutch of eggs, and this is another epic, epic clutch because this is a repeat from last year, and I'm so excited. Uh, this was one of the, uh, the one of the creme de la cremes of last year. I produced the uh, banana, super orange dream, super enchi, fire, yellow belly pides, or well, they were head pides. And um, they sold like crazy. Actually, I have one left uh, still from last year. I'm, I'm surprised that male is still hanging around. But uh, the other ones went very, very fast. And we rep I repeated the, the breeding. Uh, the female is a fire enchi orange dream, which is a very orange snake to begin with. And I bred her to my, my stud that I've been using for years. And that's the banana enchi orange dream yellow belly pied that's also... Um, het for hypo and possible het uh, albino. So he is stupendous and we got a great clutch from him. And I came into the snake room today and I, I looked down and I pulled open the bin. And there we go, we got, she's on a nice clutch of eggs and there's a couple stragglers here. Um, as you can see, she's a really beautiful looking snake. We're gonna sneak her off of, here, of her eggs. Okay, this, that's a nice little clutch. She did good, we could bring her the light here. First thing we check is to see if she's nice and hollowed out, and she is, so that means she got all the eggs out of her. She's a big girl, and the big girls do well year to year because they put their weight back on usually pretty well. She's a good eater. Um, she took a little while to get up to size initially, and she didn't want to breed right away, um, but once she did, she was spectacular, and we had a great clutch from her last year, and this, this one looks to be a good one. I think that's uh, about seven good eggs over there. And hopefully we get some more of those super, I love Super Orange Dream. And I love Super Orange Dream combined with Super Enchi and with Banana, because it's such a clean look. And I'll show you some of the, I'll show you the female and the male that we produced that I held back from last year. So we're gonna clean her up. We're gonna pull those eggs, make sure they're orientated right and put them into the egg box. All right, so the way I clean these, um, these females up, I basically just rinse them. I, I wanna get the smell of, of, of the, um, and I use a little bit of uh, dishwasher soap. I don't know if other, anyone else uses that, but I think it just takes the scent off them a little bit. I don't use a lot, I just use a little bit around their vent and around their inner body surface where they kinda of have the eggs wrapped around them so they just lose that egg smell. Once again, a quick, quick rinse, that's it. Get a few paper towels here, wipe her down kind of just gives her a little refresher. It's kind of like taking a shower you know, for a snake here. And she's good, she's in a good mood. She's, she's having a lot of size still on her. I think a couple of meals and she'll be back in business. We're gonna put her in a nice clean cage, tub with some fresh water and let her start resting up. We'll get those eggs out and put them in the incubator. All right, I, I'm here with my eggs. I'm gonna candle these eggs using my phone. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the light on the egg and we're gonna look for veins and, and arteries. These were the stragglers, okay, that were not in the pile. And I don't really know if I see too many, if I see anything. I have something right here, kind of, that I'm seeing. Right there, you can see like some, some little veins. So we're gonna hold this one upright. We're gonna put that into the egg box right there. I'm gonna mark the top in a second. Here's the other straggler. Let's look at this one. This one definitely has some, some stuff going on in it. Some veins and arteries. Let's just take a look. See where that embryo is. So the bottom is kind of just white. But this thing definitely has some veins in it. The question is, where is the embryo? Um, I would say I'm going to keep it. It seems like it's right around here almost. So we'll put this, this side up here. And then these were all kind of in under her, so these should be, yeah, these are pretty strong. You can see the strong veins in these, on both of these probably, I would think. Yeah, this one, this one uh, has some veins right there. So these will just keep upright in the same orientation that they were when she delivered them. And then I have, let's separate these two here. We have two more eggs here. These are nice and warm. Yeah, you can see that's a really nice, you can see the embryo right there. You can see all the, the blood vessels to them and the little air bubble where they're breathing from. Probably see that on this one too. Yeah, this one's really good too. And that's it. We put them upright in the egg box. So, and we'll, and I, what I do is I take a marker and I will mark it. So this way, if these eggs roll, I know for sure that 
how to put them back in the right orientation. And we got two more we'll put here, and this last one right here. So there's our eggs. We're going to mark them all, and they're all good to go. And now we could put the saran wrap on there and, and wrap this up. All right, we just uh, candled all these eggs. Luckily, I went and candled the one I didn't really check, and it, was, it needed to be turned. They're all set here. We have two, four, six, eight, nine eggs. All of them look good. There was a one, I think, that had kind of questionable um, veins, but I think they're all going to be pretty good. I'm going to get my, I got my plastic wrap here. It doesn't, you don't have to have any specific brand. It's all the same. I like to do this because it keeps the moisture in. Now, as you know, I have my, my sponges on the bottom here. They're wet. I have a light diffuser on top. I use the same setup every year. I put the saran wrap right on top here. And to be honest with you, I never even open this up for the whole 60 days that these things sit in that incubator unless I see a lot of water condensation on the top and it's dripping on the eggs because you don't want the eggs to get wet. Then I'll take it out. I might replace the saran wrap or wipe it with a paper towel. Other than that, all I got to do is put my, my tag on here of what's in here, what the breeding was. It goes into the incubator and 60 days later and we'll see what happens. I don't cut eggs anymore unless one pips or two pip and maybe one isn't coming out. That's the only time I'll cut them because every time I try to mess with eggs and cut them, it's either too early or, or something goes wrong. So I, these snakes know what to do. At least when one starts coming out, then we know that we're at the right time and these things are ready to hatch. And I incubate a little lower than most people. I incubate at 86 degrees um, because too hot is not good. A little, a little lower in the temperature scale, it might take a couple of extra days, but at least I always get good hatch rates. So I found that 86 worked well for me. I know people that do 88, 89 degrees and they're fine also, but you know what? When you have a lot of eggs in an incubator and they start respiring and, and it raises the temperature inside the incubator, you, if you're at 88 already, you can go up to 90 and that might be a problem. So I play it safe, I incubated 86. By the time all these eggs are filled with that incubator, the temperature's up a little higher than, than that anyway. You're at 87. So or so or thereabouts at least. Um, and then once things start hatching and I start taking them out of the incubator, the temperatures drop again back to 86. So that's my methodology. Um, I hope you guys have your own and it works for you, but this seems to work. I don't deal with vermiculite or any hatchrite anymore. I'm always with my sponges, my wet sponges. Works well. I keep a, a bucket uh, or a, I keep one of these tubs open in the incubator too to, to make sure the incubator is at 100% or 99% humidity and I don't seem to have any dry out problems or over wetting problems. And you know, if, a, if an egg molds, it really has nothing to do with mold building up. It has to do with the fact that the egg is no good. You pull it out and throw it in the garbage. It, I haven't had an egg that went bad that actually affected the other eggs ever. It seems like if the egg is bad, it'll mold and die. If it's, if it's good, it should be fine, even if it's next to an egg that's moldy. So if you can't take away the, the moldy egg properly without disrupting the good egg, just leave it. It's not, believe me, it happens in nature and these eggs hatch anyway. All right, I hope you guys are having a great, great Tuesday. Uh, if you like what you're seeing, ask for more in the comments below. Hit that subscribe button, turn on your notifications. We'll see you back tomorrow morning.